Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a first look at the OMP M2 V2 helicopter and I got a special surprise for you today. I'm not doing the first look. I got Freddie with me. Freddie's been a longtime visitor on the channel, longtime subscriber. He's active on Discord. He basically runs our helicopter channel. Freddie knows helicopters as well as anybody on the channel. So he's gonna walk us through the M2 first look today. So Freddie, take it away. We got the M2 and I brought the little brother M1 with us out here today. Take a look at this helicopter and see why this is a uh, world above every other micro helicopter that's come before it. This is really a step up in the world of micro RC helicopters here. So what defines micro? What, what, why is it called a micro? Because that looks, doesn't look like a, that looks like a micro. Well, some people have considered uh, 450 and below a micro size. Other considered um, below a 450 micro size and 450 up a regular size. Okay. Um, basically, flight characteristics of the helicopter below a 500, a uh, 420 size is going to be a lot different uh, in feel and flight characteristics as far as uh, you know, the stable stableness of it. Um, the micros are a lot more squirrely. Uh, you can you know make some adjustments in the radio to compensate for you know some of that, but it's still just going to have that micro feel to it. That okay. you know, it's just the characteristics of the size. What about the flight capabilities themselves? If, forget about like wind and stuff like that. If you if you're just looking and say, let's just assume calm day, right? Calm day. Does a does a mic? This is a micro. Does a micro like this fly equivalent to a 450? Is there any anything it can't do that a 450 can or 450 plus can? But when, when you're talking about uh, winds versus no winds, you know it's still going to have the same characteristics without the wind uh, for a micro as far as being, you know, very agile, very squirrely. Uh, in winds, forget these, I mean, size is everything when it comes to that. Uh, yeah. Smaller you get, I mean, this size. The head speeds of these little ones, though, are pretty high, so that does help with some of the stabilizations. But uh, you're going to get like a cork in the ocean type of feel the smaller they are, you know. So so head speed, That's a. there's a differentiator between like a fixed pitch and a, and a collective pitch. Yeah, that's to... correct. When the, uh, fix, a fixed pitch, the... Blades uh, do not pitch themselves. There's already built-in pitch to the blades. They don't move. The altitude is determined by the amount of throttle given. Wow. So yeah. it's the RPM that makes it lift or, or drop as opposed to your regular collective pitch helicopter. You usually have a set uh, flat throttle rate and uh, your throttle stick is your pitch, your collective pitch, which moves the pitch of the blades uh, positive to negative. Okay. All right, so the benefits on collective pitch are that if you want to fly inverted or 3D, you got to have collective pitch. Correct, right? yeah, you can't, with the fixed pitch, you're pretty much, you know, it's the same as you, you had a collective pitch with regular curves. There's no negative pitch, you can't go, you know, inverted, there's, really you know no tricks you can do it's just like what you would consider a regular normal uh like a real helicopter full would scale. fly like yeah full right. scale all right okay cool let's um let's take the canopy off and take a look under under the covers on the m2 so these m2s are widely considered to be some of the best you can get in the micro these space. are as far as everyone uh, is concerned and, and of course it's true um, these are like the next step up from everything else. Now this has the carbon fiber frame. There was a few attempts at doing the direct drive uh, motors in the past. Uh, I haven't kept up with you know the later models, but in recent times the OMP model uh, M1 M2 are the the only helicopters recently that came out or the first. There's a couple you know copycats that followed after uh, they brought this uh, design back but with this design here the main thing is there's no main gear which is one of the first things that go out or you strip when you have a crash um, this eliminates the need to replace your gears every time you have uh, you know practically every crash you have mm -hmm. so that saves money and time uh, too 
uh, of changing them out. What's the deal with the metal servos? I, I know, I know uh, it's blingy looking, which is really cool. But what's the deal with the metal servos? Well, I'm you know I'm not sure. I haven't looked. I think the OMP M2s are the ones that come original with metal servos. Um, I know the M1 has plastic servos, and the up to upgrade is for the aluminum servos. Now I did have a thing with this mishap. Right here, I had a crash where I hit my house, and this servo bracket that screws into the, the holding bracket there, it actually ripped the uh, servo right off of there, and the hole that for the screws into completely broke off. I had to take a soldering iron and glue it back together. With the metal servos, you, you wouldn't have that issue, okay. you know. All right. So durability is what you're saying. Durability, you stand up yeah. Stand to a little bit of abuse. All right, cool. So what else about this thing? I, one of the other things about this motor that struck me right away is how big that diameter on that is. And normally that's a torque thing, right, versus a speed thing. Um, normally if you're going to spin real fast, you're going to have a smaller diameter motor that's taller. And if you want to spin with a lot of torque, you do this format, which is like a pancake design. Yeah, well, well that, I mean, the uh, normal standard setup that, you know, they usually use, you have your motor with a very tiny pinion, and then you have a huge uh, main gear that it drives off of. So there's a huge gear reduction that takes place, which allows you to use the smaller motor, keeps down on, on weight. Uh, with this here, you know, you, you have, you're required a lot larger size motor to get the same uh, RPM torque specs out of it. So the, right now they're only, you know, practical for micro size helicopters, this size, maybe a little larger. Um, on the bigger helicopters, you would have a tremendously large motor to power them. So okay. it's not really practical for the larger uh, helicopters. What's the word on power on these Sunny Sky motors on the M2? Is it good enough? Is it overpowered? These things will scream. These things will scream. This thing will do a lot more than what most people are even capable of uh, achieving in flight, you know, as far as skill level. Um, there's only one little problem with the motor-driven tails is, of course, they're only one direction. So when you uh, in flight, the I motor, know, I noticed that. it I can know. only go one way, yeah. you know, it only blows one way, it doesn't reverse, it, the, there's no pitch uh, change into the blades. So what you have to do, what, what they do is they uh, just turn this, the speed of this motor, when it, when it goes, goes one way it, it shuts off and the other way it, it right. kicks up. Now, the first version of the M2s when they came out did not have this technology that they came out with the and the second version, it's called Tally, T-A-L-Y. Uh, it stands for something I can't remember as out of hand. But what it does is the, their sen it senses the tail, and if it's unable to hold it, uh, the position you're wanting, or uh, it, you know it's just having trouble, it will actually reduce or speed up the main motor mm. and use the torque of the motor to help compensate for the lack that the motorized tail is having trouble issues with okay so out. just to clarify what what happens in this i think it's well i mean on a, on a the helicopters i flew in in the navy they were gear driven tails so um they, there was a direct linkage a fixed i think a fixed linkage to the main gears on the on the main gearbox which actually joined the power from two jet motors in this case there's nothing out there except wires and when it wants when you need when a command is issued to yaw the craft there's one of two things will happen. It'll either speed up the motor and pull it, pull it into the prop, or it'll slow down the motor and let the torque of the main rotor push it, push Correct. the tail the other way. Correct. Okay. That's exactly how it works. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Now a lot of times, I'm ninety-nine percent of the time it works with just about everything you're going to do. When you start getting into pyro or pirouetting, pirouetting tricks, flipping, pirouetting different, uh, you know, maneuvers. That's when it really starts to show its flaw or, you know, its lack of uh, compensation of being able to hold the tail where it needs to be as we're on a regular tail, which is works just like your variable main pitch. pitch. Yeah, it's variable pitch. Those are a lot more solid. And once you have them dialed in, they're pretty much bulletproof.
All right, so Freddie, let's talk a little bit about one of the things that I didn't know when I bought this. I knew they had a fly barless unit um, because I've heard you guys talk about fly barless, but I don't know what that means. And it never occurred to me that you had to have uh, uh, in helicopters that they sold them with a combined flight computer, ESC, and radio. Can you talk a little bit about what they did on the M2 here with the, with those parts? Yeah, they pretty much conserved everything with size. On a lot of these micros, you have a board, which right here is uh, your main control board. Underneath it, the second one is your ESC. Now you notice on the M1 they didn't. They chose not to encase it yeah. to save on weight. So this is how normal micros are. Loosely, you would have just uh, your, you know your control board, and then your ESC, which your battery plugs into. On this here, is it's same thing. It's all inside. They enclosed it so it's protected, uh, and you know, of course, in case of crash or whatever, and. It's all one unit. Uh, with, this is all, uh, you know, weight is the major thing with helicopters. So weight is, you know, saved by just compacting everything into one unit instead of having separate units throughout the whole thing. And, of course, on your micro-sized helicopters, space is, you know, the major uh, thing. There's just not the real estate to, to do it in, in this small package here. We're, we just took a little break and now we're coming back to talk about the protocols and the difference between the OMP protocol and the other ones that can be run on this fly bar, uh, fly barless controller. So why don't you walk us through that? All uh, right, OMP, what they did was they uh, came out with their own uh, protocol and when you use the protocol, they have it so it's set up so you can basically just, you know, get up and go uh, without, uh, with very little uh, set up time and uh, having to mess with, you know, your curves for throttle and pitch and all that. They programmed everything into the uh, fly barless itself. Preset uh, throttle uh, and pitch curves, everything is set up for beginners. There's uh, basically the very minimum you have to do to get up and go flying. And then you have the option for DSMX, and when you use that, it bypasses their protocols and then allows you to set up and customize your own curves to your flying style. And as your skills develop and change, you'll notice yourself, you know, changing those uh, as you, your skills develop. So when you first start flying, you're going to probably, it's a better option to use the OMP protocol because that'll get you up and running fast. And then as you start to develop an opinion about how the helicopter's flying, you'll probably then want to switch to DSM or SBUS because that gives you a little bit more customization control in the radio configuration, right? Yeah, that's correct. You know, was when beginners, if you've never flown heli or you're new to heli, it's gonna, you know, there's a lot of things to learn and, you know, some of these things are confusing. So what OMP has done is simplified all that and they put everything in with their pilots to what they believe is a good setup for a beginner. And I have flown the M1 with the OMP protocol and it is a very good beginner setup. It was solid, no problems. Of course, you know, I didn't like it because I'm beyond that skill yeah, level. Yeah, not a beginner. Yeah, so uh, as you first get into it, it's I totally recommend using the OMP protocol. It's simple, it's fast, it's a good setup for beginners. Yeah, and so Freddie's advice on this, by the way, I, I've already configured my radio with the OMP arrangement. I used the multi-protocol module inside the TX-16S. I did have to update the firmware to the latest, but once I did that, it bound up instantly. I used a very simple configuration in the radio. I'll post a screenshot of that in post so you can get a look at what it looks like for the input tab and the mixer tab. And I went out and made in the plane, the helicopter, and I got it up in the air. There were no surprises. I got to hover. I moved around a little bit in the yard and I landed. And I did that without any adult supervision on my own based on the OMP <laughs> protocol. So what I'm trying to tell you is that if you have no idea what you're doing with a helicopter like I like like me, that OMP protocol is a very good place to start. And Freddie's the one that cued me in on that. He's the one that told me, yeah, you should probably do that as a beginner. 
Yeah, and you know, another thing, a lot of time, you, you, a lot of questions come up, you know, uh, with beginners. What what throttle curve shall I use? What pitch curve shall I use? And you know, I always tell people a good place to start, but every person is going to have a different setup, so their style of flying, how they like their helicopter to feel. Uh, I can show, give you examples of, of, of excellent pilots that fly similar styles and i reviewed their setups and they were completely totally different yeah. you would think they were using the same thing but they're not uh it's all how the helicopter you want it to feel to you and your your skill level and style um so a lot of customization is what it boils down to based on what yeah you, with you the own p protocol you don't even have to put uh, all you have to do is assign your channels basically right and you're done that you're off and flying yep very simple so I think that's a good recap on what's going on with the computer and why you use OMP versus DSM or SBUS. If you know what you're doing and you want to do your own mix, by all means, this is capable of supporting that. If you have no clue and you're just getting started, stick with the OMP setup and that'll get you up in the air and get you flying. So let's jump into what I'd like to do, that, that swash plate. <laughs> let's talk about that because for people coming from fixed wing, there's a whole lot happening there. So why don't we talk a little bit about how that thing functions and what's good about their design? Why don't we, why don't we spend well, a little time on most, that? Most, pretty much all um, swatch plates are you know, the same on these helicopters. The one thing that OMP has done is a lot of times these helicopters that are you know, marketed toward beginners is a price point and you know parts price and stuff like that but they're all plastic parts it's like 95 percent of it is all plastic mm -hmm. and a lot of them they have the plastic swash plates so you're talking about this piece right yeah here. that piece and the, like the arms where it connects to your um ball links these those no no the, the, on the swash itself oh. the whole base plate and these little arms right here will be plastic okay and you know if the plastic isn't stiff enough you will get it'll flex on flex. you and that will you know affect your thing so then you have to go out and there's a whole aftermarket slew of stuff to purchase more of spend more money on the upgrade to metal parts but OMP model has bypassed all that and pretty much brought you a top class helicopter with all the upgrades already installed ready to go there's no upgrades because it's it's already all steel uh, there's really no need to upgrade anything on these helicopters. They fly great right out of the package. Awesome. So swash plate design. There's no. You don't have any concerns about that. Now this beginner. is pretty much the same as you know. They're all basically the the same uh, 120 degree uh, swash plates, which is you know the arms are 120 degrees uh, apart from each other. What are these arms for? Okay, you got your. These control your swash. As the swash tilts, it creates pitch at certain points. So when you're going forward, the swash is going to tilt forward, and then and the blades are going to pitch at the point at where the it point gets where in the back. Right? Correct. Yeah, and it it, that will tell you forward. And you get negative pitch on the front end of that of rotation. So yeah, yeah, that's correct. And that that goes, of course, for all you know, all 360 way. degrees around it. Yeah. So as the helicopter blade is spinning around, it's con the blades are constantly changing pitch. Yes, right? that's correct. Constantly, constantly changing pitch. And yeah. not only that, but they can also collectively change pitch at the same time and go both both go up. That's the point, because I've noticed that when I was fooling around with the uh, um, throttle, is that when you do that, this entire swash plate moves up and the pitch collectively moves yeah, up. Yeah, that's your collective pitch collective on the pitch. collective pitch helicopter. Like I was saying earlier, compared to, whereas a fixed pitch, the throttle uh, RPM is what controls your altitude. On a collective pitch, it's just a set throttle, one flat, and it just stays there, and the whole swash movement up and down you know creates your collective positive and negative pitch okay okay so um blades these are just standard plastic blades nothing special about that i think the replacements are seven bucks right yeah they're, they're pretty cheap bucks, now yeah. on the m1 they do have another set of they call them soft blades uh -huh. they're clear some people uh use them for indoor use um okay. they won't break your tv i guess and uh they're also not recommended for 3d flight if you just you know doing regular flight with it they're, they're fine but for 3d flight they have these 
I, there's some kind of carbon fiber embedded or something in these blades. I'm not sure on, I didn't read up completely on the technology they use, but they're not just plastic blades. They're a lot stronger and they can actually take a, you know, a mild crash and, and, and come out unscathed. Okay. So price point on the M1, how much is that one? Um, if you find them on sale, uh, you know, when they have them, I think I paid two thirty six for this, but regularly they're the two fifty. And then this here is the regular M two version, which is what three fifty. Three fifty, yeah. And then they have the Explorer model, which they did add plastic parts to it to keep down on cost for some people, mainly the plastic blade grips on them. And that one's like what three ten three. Yeah, it's like three oh nine or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I guess the question now, for 350 bucks, is there a better option, or is this probably, you know, for the money, is this the right? As far as it goes for micro helicopters, this this is the top of the line here. Uh, all you have to do is go out and compare. You know, I mean, there's not a big market as it is for micros, because micros has always been known as beginners loosely, you know, pick them up because it's a, ch a cheaper option to get uh, your feet wet and see, you know, if you even like helicopter or something for you to do. This here is a little more pricier, but you're paying for the quality that you're getting. I mean, you got all aluminum parts, you got carbon fiber frame. Now on the M1, they chose to use a plastic frame to save on weight, but it's very durable frame. And also the OM2, uh, the M2, the the version, the first version had carbon fiber landing gear, uh -huh. and the carbon fiber landing gear is notorious for breaking on hard landings. These will have, take a, a landing; they're pliable. Some plastic. You, yeah. Okay. No problem. So they did upgrade that. Uh, so it's actually a downgrade in materials, but an upgrade in reliability. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. They they well, they found out people were you know having to splitting, splitting, and breaking their skids. So they went to this for the second version, which is considered for the company because it's not helping them out. They were probably making more money uh, selling skids to people, but. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, one a couple last quick points. We'll wrap this video up. Um, the batteries on these, you, if you're a fixed wing guy, you know that there's some pliability in your battery size. You can only go with, say, uh, you know, if you have a plane that, that says we recommend a 2200, you might say, well, I can stuff a 3000 in there, no problem. And you can, you can get away with it. Uh, helicopters are a little more prescriptive because the space constraints are a little tighter. So when they say that, uh, when they give dimensions on a battery, you're well advised to try and stay within those dimensions. So here's the, this is a 650 battery that came with the helicopter for the M2, and Freddie just got out. That looks like a, what, two cell? Yeah, this uh, is two cell, cell for the M1. M1. Now, on the M2, you have a little bit of play, I believe, in your... Underneath, yeah. Underneath. Yeah. But with the M1, it was a pressure fit type thing where it has to be exact. The only thing holding it in is the friction of the frame against the battery okay. so you're really limited on this and on the m2 you're kind of limited but there are a, a few attitude. alternatives yeah. you can put in them yeah so you guys like to fly a puffy batteries no <laughs> yeah there's no puffing going no on puffing. here that's yeah. time to get rid of them then all right let's wrap this up freddie by taking a look at the case real quick because um if you're flying a helo you probably you know fixed wing you just throw them in the back of the truck and you off you go but in a helicopter, you really don't want those things knocking around in your vehicle. So you'll see the helicopter guys, Freddie just showed up today with a really nice bag. And for the uh, M2 V2, they have a really nice case. And I think this is EPP foam. It's very soft on the outside. It's not scratchy at all. And you can see, I'm trying to give an indent. It is pliable. So it's a really nice case. Um, and it makes sense to me. Um, you know, I, I would never, keep an airplane case like this but for a helicopter it makes a lot of sense when i'm done flying it was back in the case yeah and they have the same case with same the m1 too it's the exact same just miniature all right so nice case everything fits in very cleanly and um i did uh there's some instructions in here there's a silica silica packet and they gave a few uh spare parts i guess one's a main shaft and a feathering shaft uh, yeah you got a main shaft and your feather well it's called a feathering shaft some people call it the horizontal shaft though mm -hmm. 
and a couple of extra servo horns too. So a few yeah. spares. Servo horns are the, probably the main thing you're going to break in a crash on these. I've replaced a couple on here already. All right. But they're actually designed to break to save your servo right. gear. So right. yeah. Right. Yep, that, that makes sense. All right, guys. Well, listen, I hope you enjoyed the first look on the M2, and we kind of snuck in a little bit on the M1 as well, so I hope you enjoyed that first look. I'd like to say thanks a lot to Freddie for his advice and helping me get up and running on the helicopters. If you like this kind of material, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. Keep an eye on the channel because you know what's next, don't you? We're going to fly it. That's all I've got for today. Say bye, Freddie. Later, folks. <laughs> Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.